Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be taking a look at the latest lineup of Kados product, which is the Vim 4. So let's get started. Now, before I begin, I do want to thank Kados for sending this over to me for review and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. Now, the first thing I got to mention about this guy is the form factor. Even though they have added new upgrades to this guy, more components, newer CPU, more RAM and everything, it is still the same size as all the other Vim products. Now, the Vim 3 is the same size as this and also the Vim 2 is also the same size as this, as well as the Vim 1, which I actually don't have one on hand, but they have not changed size, which I really do like, similar to what Raspberry Pi is doing, where they maintain the same size throughout. This way, if you have cases or components built for this guy already, you can use them throughout every version of their boards. While maintaining the same size as everything, they do have the same areas for the ports. So in the back, you have USB, then USB-C, then HDMI, Ethernet, and then another USB. Same goes for every other boards that they have talked about. What they added in this board, which I really do like, is HDMI in. This can essentially be a capture card. So it has ability to capture the HDMI up to 4K 60 frames. They have moved that component to the front of the board that you see over here via micro HDMI. Now in front of the board, other than the micro HDMI, you still have the 40 pin GPIO. And then on the side of the board, you have the three buttons for power, function, and reset. On the bottom, they added more components where they have the VBI, the DSI, the CSI1 and CSI2. And you still have the PCIe slot on the bottom or also the M.2 slot. Now you can get the expansion card that you could plug into that slot that will expand it to allow you to use either a modem or a M.2. So yeah, that's another factor that you could plug in. That board also works for the Vim 3, I believe. Now also on the bottom, you also have the SD card slot, same as the other model. So if you don't want to load the operating system on the built-in 32 gigabyte EMMC, you can still use the SD card slot to load your operating system. Or you can also use the SD card slot to install an operating system to the EMMC, which is really not needed anymore with the new firmware that they got on this board. Now to talk about the hardware components a little bit, inside you are using the all new AM Logic A311D-2, which is an eight core processor, big little. So four cores big, four cores little, eight gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of EMMC, 5.1 Bluetooth, gigabit ethernet and a dual band wi-fi this also does have a npu built in like the model 3s and the l so you'll be seeing that coming into future i think they're still working with the licensing on that otherwise this is a very powerful board i've actually been playing around with it for the past two weeks as ubuntu desktop using a desktop on this guy was very seamless and smooth now it does support ubuntu 22.04 as well as android 11 so i'm going to show you some demos on that in a second my favorite part about this guy is the hdmi in seriously like it's really cool um, but it, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it to work on Ubuntu 22.04, but it does work on Android 11. I'm pretty sure in the near future, if I play around with the hardware or something, I should be able to get the HDMI in into Ubuntu 22.04. I'm just probably missing a component or two, but it is there. The hardware is there and it should be able to work. Now, jumping onto the desktop. All right, so here we have Ubuntu 22.04 installed. I'm using that utility, so it's fresh from their servers. Uh, the login, it's Kados, and the password is Kados. And this desktop runs amazing. Uh, it almost feels like this desktop right here as I'm running it. Like everything runs very smooth. And I believe it is running Wayland. Let me see. Uh, let me go to settings. So go to settings and I could check it out. Let me go down to about. And yeah, it is running, running on Wayland. So you're gonna get the smoother, whoops. So you are gonna get the smoother graphic approach. You see how I'm just moving the window? Uh, that's my mouse. Um, and it works pretty well. I'm also running YouTube videos off of Firefox. It runs pretty well. I don't think it's using the graphic acceleration, but the GPU is strong enough or the CPU is strong enough to push that. So I'm gonna head over to YouTube and just show you guys a video. Let me see. All right, so here I am on YouTube. I am just gonna put something on maybe, let me see, something that I could just, I don't know. 
I'll just pop on one of my own videos, which is this one right here. And let me see if I can pull up stats for it. Actually, yeah, I'll just do it. Stats for nerds. Obviously, it's not going to get any drop frames. Let me jump over to there. Uh, stats for nerds. Zero drop frames. Full screen. Zero drop frames. Um, am I running at 1080? I am running at 1080. And there you have it. Zero drop frames on 1080. Um, running full screen. And this is off the Firefox browser, which is running off Snap, which I'm pretty sure it's not using the graphic acceleration, but this CPU is strong enough to push that. And if I was to show you guys uh, usage, actually, HTOP, I got 8 gigs of RAM, 1 gig of swap eight cores and it's running pretty good i mean it got up to six when i was running the firefox and i don't know if you could pick it up but the fan does uh make some noise when you're running something like that now i did manage to install a couple of other things on here uh which might fascinate you guys uh one of which is let me see box 86 and box 64. now on the later release of Ubuntu, they will have the fix that I recommended so that you can actually run Box86 and Box64 properly. But for now, you do have to use like a certain way to do it, which I was able to get it to work. But you don't have to worry about the way I did it because it's gonna be fixed in the future releases. So yeah, I'm gonna jump into one of the games I was testing, which was Astro Menace. And let's go to build. And this is Astro Menace. Now this is a native um, Linux game that does not require Box86 or Box64. I'm just running it straight. I just compiled it straight for ARM64. And this is it. It actually runs okay. I think it's like running at maybe 15 frames per second because this is a pretty three, big 3D game, uh, especially for something like this. Uh, at 720, this game runs absolutely amazing. So let me see if I could create a quick profile because you can see the lagginess right now. Uh, create this. All right, let me go to main menu and see if I can switch the resolution. And go to, oh, I can't even switch the resolution here. Normally you can, but because I think these are onboards that does this, you really can't. So. I'm going to start a quick game. I'm not going to really play it, but you get the idea of how it looks. This game is actually pretty fun. If you guys decide to play it, you basically upgrade your weapons, buy more weapons, stuff like that. Every level you earn money. And it's a side-scroller shooter. Ooh, F2. I could show my FPS. Yeah. Wow. 5.8 frames per second on that. 2.38 frames per second. It's actually pretty responsive even if it is at 8 frames per second. So I'm just gonna shoot down some of these guys, make some money. Do I make money every time I kill somebody? Yes, I do. There you go. Oh my God, it's a little sensitive on the mouse. Onto something that's a little bit more fun. Uh, I am gonna jump over to FTL. And I actually love this game. So this time I have to run box 64, FTL.AMD64. And there you go, I'm running an x86 application, oh, a 64-bit application, or AMD 64 application, on uh, using Box86 on the Kados right now. And Fast and Light is actually a really fun game if you guys never played it. It's on GOG, it's also on Steam. It's basically um, open world ship creation rogue fighter type thing. I, I don't even know the best way to describe it, but yeah. First, you start off with three employees or three crew members. You jump over to other places to see if you want to um, find a distress signal or fight a some fight an enemy like this guy. Intervene with defending outpost. Now I continue. I got to transfer some power over to there. 
And he's got drones, so I'm gonna see if I could knock out their drones. Oh man, that's gonna hurt. He's gonna shoot me with a missile? Nope, miss, okay, ow. So now I took out his drone, I gotta take out his missiles. Because that's gonna hurt if it bypassed my shield. Ooh, good, it missed. There you go, took out his weapons, and now I could slowly pick at him. So I might take out his shields. I don't want to, I'll use missiles. I'm not really saving this game, but I'll, I'll use up my missiles. There you go, no shields. He's got his drones almost back, but I already destroyed him. Now, you collect the loot. Uh, Anti-personal drone, you got 12 gears. Uh, yeah, so anyway, this game does run really well. Uh, because it doesn't take much to run, but yes, you can run 64-bit applications on Ubuntu. Now, another game that I did try to run was Art of Rally. Funny to say, it does actually run, and it's a Unity game. So, Box 64, but Worse than Astro Menace, I'm only getting about like one to three frames per second, but it does run using Box 64. And I, I gotta say, this is impressive because when I tried to run this on Raspberry Pi, it would just freeze because it is too heavy of a game for uh, Raspberry Pi 4 to even run. It'll just like lag all the way through, but it's impressive enough for this board to actually be able to run uh, this type of game, even through the course of the box 86 emulation oh here we go so i finally started up it took like a minute maybe or two but you could see it's only running about like one frame per second the fan is kicking in that's all you're gonna hear but it is doing its thing and able to run this game um let me see if i can get into a free roam and you'll see how slow it is i'm not gonna really play it because it's this game cannot be played on this uh, condition but at least I can show you guys uh, how it looks when it's in the game. Well, apparently this time around, it did not want to load. I don't know why. Something must have been hanging in it or something like that, but I wasn't able to get into a game this time, but I did manage to get into a game before. Otherwise, uh, Ubuntu is a really good desktop. It's, it works really well on especially this environment with eight cores and eight gigs of RAM. I didn't have any problems. And they also do have a few of their own uh, little things, just like this fan controller. So let me see if I can find any more fan. So their fan settings allows you to adjust what you want to be uh, kicked in on the fan. So if I hit high, it will automatically kick it on high. I didn't want to save the settings, so I go back to auto. But yeah, all you hear is the fan going on high. Uh, they have a few other things in here, but yeah, ultimately, let me switch that back because it's, it's a little bit loud right now. Ultimately, Ubuntu works really well on the Kandas. Now, let's switch over to Android, and I'm going to be using their also boot up firmware utility to flash Android back into this guy. Luckily for me, at this time, there's an actual update for the kernel system with the O. O W or O Wow or something like that. So I'm currently on version 220415 and there's an update for version 220421. So I'm glad that I was able to catch that in this video. So they firmware update and it just goes through this process. So it does help to jump into this menu from time to time to see if there's any other updates uh, just so you get the latest uh, firmware and the latest software that you're gonna be downloading off the internet. Now here we are on Android. I'm just going to do a quick voiceover of what you're seeing. I basically installed a couple of applications, mostly benchmark applications, just so we could get an actual benchmark on this guy. Unfortunately, the Android version that they have, which is Android 11, is only 32-bit. And I hope the 64-bit will be coming along soon because it does affect the benchmark a bit. Now you can see the scores on the screen right now and it is not bad. The scores are pretty high up there as far as the 8 core goes. It's not the fastest. Now going into the settings, 
It has all the standard settings in the Android built, except for this one new prompt, which is the Kados menu. The Kados menu not only allows you to control the fan and maybe the LED uh, lighting, but it also has the option for HDMI in. And that's what I was playing around with. Now with HDMI in, I do have a Windows 11 machine plugged into it. Not the fastest in the world, it's an old laptop. But yes, it was able to push my display over to the HDMI in. And what's cool about this is, you can actually use the screen recorder from Android. It'll capture the video that is coming out of the HDMI input. So essentially this is an HDMI capture machine. Jumping into a game, uh, I was able to play PSP. Um, most of the games I wanted to install on this guy because I don't have Google Play, I'm not able to actually even run the game. So I decided to throw in an emulator and I'm here playing Street Fighter 3 Alpha just to see how it would run with PSP. And honestly, it runs really well. Other than my poor playing with Ryu, yeah, the game runs pretty well. So guys, I am in love with this board right now. I got a lot of projects coming up with it, uh, namely Proxmox. One of the things that I've been testing on my Raspberry Pi was installing Proxmox onto a Raspberry Pi, but it would benefit from a stronger ARM-based CPU as well as more cores and RAM. So this guy comes to mind. I will be installing Proxmox onto this and turning this into a tiny little virtual machine server. So that video will be coming in soon. I do want to test Android out a little bit because while it doesn't have Google Play, there is still a lot of applications that I got to search down to see what it can install and what I can do. The only downside is that it is only a 32-bit Android, so there's a lot of applications that don't work, not only because it's Google Play, just 32-bit won't work with some of the games. Now, I did have them update something on the kernel for the Ubuntu side, so I hope that will be coming soon. And with that fix, that will be fixing box 64 and box 86, which will allow me to play Steam games off this guy. And I, I'm, I can't wait to test it with the stronger GPU that this guy supports over the Raspberry Pi. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you have any questions about this board, hit it down in the comments below or hit me up on Discord. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.